Let me change uh, direction altogether and ask you about something that we've, I don't think we've ever discussed, and that is the U- Ukraine-Russian war, Russia, Russia-Ukraine war. First of all, what is your assessment of the, the uh, military situation on the ground today? I think it's um, dire for the Ukraine. Uh, I think the Ukrainian army is in the situation it is for lack of supply. And um, I blame the American Republican Party for that problem. And I also blame the various European governments for not stepping up and responsibly uh, expanding uh, their own military industries. If the Ukrainian army were to receive the kind of material support that it deserves, I think the Russian army would be in far worse shape than it is right now. The Russian army's performance has been, to put it mildly, deplorable. Um, Their latest, quote, victory um, was the result of what we call steamroller uh, tactics that killed 14, 15, maybe 16,000 soldiers, uh, hundreds and hundreds hundreds of armored vehicles that they can ill afford to use. They lost uh, numerous uh, highly sophisticated uh, aircraft, fighter bombers, that they also can ill afford to use. And what did the Ukrainians do in response? Well, they they are creative, and they um, just kept producing drones, first-person viewing drones, they call them. They're kamikaze drones. And this is what they're using in place of heavy artillery. And it is holding the line between those drones and uh, Russian uh, human wave tactics. Uh, So far, the Ukrainians are holding on. Um, The Ukrainians have done a splendid job in the Black Sea in both bottling up and then destroying the Russian Black Sea fleet with the use of um, sea drones. Uh, very sophisticated ones, I might add. And the Russians don't seem to, the Russian Navy at least, doesn't seem to have an adequate response to this. A lot of people are not, I'm, I'm reading, I'm in the weeds as far as this war is concerned. And the Russians are losing a lot of very high value targets that uh, people are not aware of. Ships, uh, AWACS type aircraft, airborne warning and control aircraft that they can ill afford to use very sophisticated SU-34 fighter bombers. Um, They have withdrawn uh, from combat the uh, T-14 Armada tank, which is their latest and greatest uh, uh, tank, because they're afraid of it being embarrassed on the battlefield. They refuse to uh, uh, deploy the SU-57, which is their uh, greatly... um, you know, exaggerated uh, stealth uh, fighter bomber. Uh, So they're hurting. They are hurting. Despite the fact that they are, the Ukrainians are down now to about two or 3,000 shells a day that they're lobbing at the Russians. And the Russians are coming back with 20, 30, 40,000 shells. Now, this is a day. This is like World War I. And the fact that the Ukrainians are holding on right now is... Um, really, it's, it's quite remarkable. They have a well-motivated, a very highly motivated army that uh, seems to be well-led. Um, and the Russians are doing what the Russians have always done. These are, you know, Stalin waves, you know, just line convicts, release prisoners, whatever, up and just throw them at an enemy line. And I've seen, I look at video almost every night of what's going on on the battlefields in Ukraine, and it's a slaughter of Russians. I mean, it's just, they don't understand. I'll give you one example. You cannot have a unit assemble in the open within artillery range to greet, for example, a visiting Russian general 
and not expect to pay the consequences. I've seen live video of of companies and battalions of Russian soldiers lined up just getting wiped out, massacred by pinpoint Ukrainian artillery um, fires. The Russians, they're not learning anything in all of this, um, which, okay, is fine as far as it goes. Um, what, I will what, what, do you, what do you think Putin's goals were when he initiated this campaign? The goals were pretty clear. The goals were the reabsorption of Ukraine into a new Russian empire. Certainly everything... Um, all, all of Ukraine or, or all, Eastern Ukraine? All of Ukraine. The, the strike that was directed at Kiev from the north was a war, should have been a war winning strike. Should have been. And the plan was either to assassinate um, the um, Ukrainian uh, leader, Zelensky. 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 Zelensky to, to assassinate him. And efforts, serious efforts were made to do so. Um, or to force him into exile. The column's um, orders were to seize Kiev, take over the government, install a puppet regime, and drive west. The uh, ultimate objective was um, um, basically western Ukraine, Lvov or Lviv. Um, the Russians were understandably very concerned about the Ukraine becoming part of NATO. Should we have known, should the United States in particular have known what the expected response from a guy like Putin in particular would be? Um, yeah, they should have known. And before pushing uh, Zelensky in, into the positions that he adopted, um, they should have beefed up the Ukrainian army as much as possible, but they didn't. They didn't. So they were like, I mean, you talk about October 7th being a debacle. The invasion of Russia, uh, by Russia, of Ukraine, um, was an equally egregious debacle for American strategic policy. They just didn't seem aware of how sensitive the Russian or how violent the Russian response would be to a country like Ukraine being becoming a NATO country. So just as it is, it is a fact that that, that uh, Ukraine became a base for CIA operations and and uh, American operations in general against against Russia for many years. No, that, that's many years. clear, but it was bigger than that because the United States was quite clear in saying that a, an end goal would probably be the inclusion of Ukraine in NATO. And the Russians were very clear that if you continue to pursue this policy, there will be uh, a very violent reaction. Okay, if you know that and you hear them, and you understand where they're coming from, and you see their movement and deployments uh, of troops to back that threat up, then you're kind of obligated to help the Ukrainians in whatever way possible blunt that kind of attack. Look what happened in Hungary in 1956. The Americans boosted the Hungarians up to rebel against the Russians in expectation of an American intervention, which the Americans never had any intention of doing, but they boosted them up. I have read a couple of interesting comparative analyses of 1956 and this late in Hungary and this latest war in uh, Ukraine and um, the role of the United States in both cases um, was very apparent in boosting a country up to expect help in the event of a of a Russian counter attack, and as it was it never materialized. As it was in 2014 in Ukraine, the correct the uh, correct. uprising, which was entirely organized 
by in the United Ma States. Maidan CIA. Square. Yes. Yeah. It was organized. It was a CIA operation through and through. Absolutely. Um, there's, I mean, there's no question about and it that. Brought, it brought down a democrat democratically elected pro-Russian government and replaced it with a pro-Western government. It sound, kind of sounds familiar with what they're doing now with us. Um, uh, but oh, For those who don't know, this is what the CIA does. The CIA uh, is, is really a, an, an, a, a corporation that deals in regime change. Correct. And they've done it in about 75 different instances. This is documented. E even in those cases, such as uh, when the Shah fell, where it was the sin of omission. It wasn't always what they did, uh, that is the sin of commission. But it was sometimes they just let um, governments that they disapproved of just fall by omission. And then we express surprise. At how did this happen? Well, and horror. All, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I think it must, it must uh, by now be clear to most thinking people who have some knowledge of history and some uh, understanding and awareness of, of current events that if, for those who are old enough who recall President uh, Ronald Reagan referring to uh, the Soviet Union as, as the a, evil empire. The evil empire, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, there was truth in that statement. But the, the exact same thing can be said with equal veracity with regards to the American empire. It is truly a, an evil empire. It is not what it, what it purports to be. It's not in it God, not benign, it's it not in not God we trust. It's not what the money, what the coins and, and, the, and the dollar bills say. In God yep. trust and and what have you, it's it is really and truly a ruthless and uh, unprincipled, un, unprincipled and uh, amoral that that runs that runs the United States and has done for well certainly certainly since the Second World War. Correct. Since the uh, creation of the CIA in 1947. Correct. Uh, and uh, this is something that m more and more people, I think, are, are becoming aware of. Uh, having said what you did about the the situation on the ground in in Ukraine, it's still it's it's Russia's war to lose. Correct. Um, however, if the Ukrainians uh, do get an adequate resupply of uh, uh, artillery uh, and rocket um, munitions, what they can do. I don't think they can go on the attack, but what they can do is cause uh, Russian casualties to reach a, a critical point where Russians themselves say, we, we don't want to be part of this. You have to look at things like um, the numbers of deserters that are coming across the line, the Russian deserters that are coming across the line. It's, it's a major problem for them. Um, you have to look at their declining number of uh, top of the line uh, armored fighting vehicles. They're not producing enough for adequate replacement, let alone expansion. So they're relying upon very old, um, sometimes 1950s, uh, era uh, equipment that they're just throwing into the battlefield. It's not entirely clear that they have adequate artillery production capabilities, hence their reliance on, believe it or not, North Korean and uh, Iranian uh, artillery and missiles. Um, th and the North Korean drones. Well, drones, yes, but also now uh, missiles, surface to surface missiles and uh, artillery, heavy artillery shells. Um, the North Korean uh, material is shown to be pretty inferior. Uh, they have a very high failure rate. But the Iranian equipment is uh, good. It works. It gets to where it's, where it's intended to be. So um, Russian casualties and inadequate Russian replacement of uh, equipment are the two 
metrics we have to look at to see whether or not Putin can stay in this fight. Uh, the Ukrainians have shown no inclination whatsoever to just surrender their uh, eastern regions, the Donbass regions and Luhansk and that regions in the east, the areas that are typically characterized as Russian speaking areas um, that are now occupied by the Russian army or even the Ukraine for that matter. Um, having said that, um, there's no indication that the Russian Navy, the, the Black Sea Navy, uh, will have any significant effect on the um, on Ukraine's ability to um, open up a sea line of communication through the Black Sea to the um, Dardanelles, the Bosporus. Uh, that means um, increased grain shipments, which is one of the main sources of uh, hard capital for Ukraine. Um, so I, I think all told, if additional equipment could be supplied to Ukraine, whether in terms of, uh, rockets, ground to ground rockets, artillery shells, um, and most importantly, air defense equipment, such as the Patriot, um, missile system from the United States, I think, I think that they'll be able to hold out long enough for Russia's declining uh, material, um, av the availability of high quality um, military supplies and high quality manpower um, to force something. Um, would it involve, for example, maybe a coup d'etat? Would it involve an assassination of Putin? Well, he's certainly reacting as if those are real possibilities. So what we have, what the West has to do is supply the U Ukrainians with enough equipment to increase Russian casualties and exhaust their ability to resupply equipment or replace equipment that is lost. If the West is capable of doing that, then anything is possible. You know, the, the Russians may just say enough, you know. Um, my, my, prediction, my prediction would be, based on what I've seen and heard, that uh, the Russians will not stop and that they cannot be broken. All the uh, e economic sanctions, very significant sanctions against Russia, have actually resulted paradoxically, in the strengthening of the Russian economy. It is now more, <laughs> more robust. They, have more, uh, they, have, they are able to call on more, more cooperation with their BRICS uh, allies, etc. I, 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 think, I, think I, th I think the Ukraine, despite what you have said, and I also doubt the American ability to uh, endlessly resupply the, the U Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians have suffered my understanding is something like 400, 500,000 uh, casualties. casualties. Um, they just, they will not have the wherewithal to continue, I think. The, the Russian ability to evade sanctions has got to be looked at very carefully because what they've actually expanded is some of their military production capability. But as far as their economy is concerned, it's really suffering and will continue to suffer for this foreseeable future. Will the Russians continue to fight? Um, I, I could say yes, they will, until... They, they, until view, they view it as existential. They do. And if they have to supply soldiers with pitchforks and send them into battle, they will. But there will come a point in time, uh, possibly where their casualty numbers will just be unsustainable. And there are certain parts of the front right now where that is the case. Um, they're raiding their prisons right now for manpower. And that, that can't work out too well for them over the long term because they're hardly trained. Uh, the desertion rate... That's entirely true, but, the, but you... 
Ukrainians have an even more severe manpower problem. The, the Ukrainians do have a manpower problem, and Zelensky is now doing his best to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel. But this is why uh, Western resupply uh, to the Ukrainian army is so important, because this equipment can be a substitute. If you're not going on the attack, but you're simply blunting in en enemy attacks, then uh, additional uh, numbers of superior equipment uh, which the Ukrainians can operate, is the best substitute for a lack of manpower. Um, you need the manpower to go on the attack. If they don't have it, then they're just going to have to hold the Russians long enough for something to happen. Um, and that something has to do, unfortunately, for the Ukrainians with uh, Putin being overthrown. And the chances of that, I, I wouldn't want to... Um, I would not bet on that. I wouldn't bet on that at all. When you're dealing with a ruthless man, um, I, mean, I wouldn't he, bet on he, it. he is ruthless, no question, but he is also a Russian patriot. And I believe he has the support of uh, the vast majority of the Russian people. And uh, I do, my, my position is that uh, the West, and particu particularly the United States, um, acted quite rec recklessly in co-opting various East European nations into NATO. And this, this was uh, a scenario that was entirely predictable. In fact, uh, Putin said explicitly several times that this is what will happen if you do not cease and desist. I think that the Ukraine might have been um, a country too far for NATO expansion. Uh, the Russians were unambiguous in, in, in saying, if you try to incorporate Ukraine into NATO, there will be a violent reaction. I think the more appropriate uh, course of action would have had the West uh, try to create a neutral Ukraine, uh, something like the old Finland. Yes, but that's uh, but that's not not what the the, the Newlands and the uh, and the neocons. Uh, no, they in they in the U.S. were interested in doing. No, not at all. And uh, despite the fact that uh, Putin was unambiguously clear in what the potential consequence not sorry not potential what the what the consequences would be of an attempt to turn Ukraine into the eastern bastion of NATO, um, once again, we have to have a very clear understanding of what we did, what the West did to precipitate this nightmare um, in Ukraine. Um, will we fight, will the West fight to the last drop of Ukrainian blood? Well, it seems that's the case. So I think I think that is likely to be the case. And I, I predict that this will be viewed with the benefit of hindsight by historians, this episode, um, and all, all that led up to the uh, outbreak of war in, in U Ukraine, but all the policies, the American policies that led to that over many years, going back to the time of Clinton, shall we say. Oh, it started. It started under Clinton with Newland and, and the exactly. rest. Of yes, exactly. And in, in, at that time, by the way, it should be mentioned. Most people do not know this. Putin actually asked Clinton if if the Russian Federation were to request to be become a member of NATO, what would the response be? And uh, Clinton initially said. That's, a, that's an interesting idea, and I'll, I'll look into that. And he sounded quite positive about it. The very same day, in the evening, he met he met Putin for dinner, and he he said, uh, "I spoke to my people, and that's not going to happen." If you look at what Victoria Newland said in by way of intercepted um, Russian intercepted communications, they they got a breakout completely of what the American objectives uh, were. And that was to bring Ukraine directly into NATO. 
and they they weren't speculating. I mean, it, it came right. No, there, there was never any, never any, there was never any reason why Russia uh, would or should go along with that. It, no, and you know, if the United States were going to go forward with that policy, you have to look at potential consequences, and one of the very real consequences would have been a war, plain and simple. So, do you go forward with that, or do you strive to? perhaps back up and turn Ukraine into a neutral country? Or do you go the other way and seriously rearm them for a war against Russia? Well, we did neither. It was think, the worst of all I think, possible I think, outcomes. You're, I think you're correct. I think it will prove to be, to have been a bridge too far, to quote the, the famous book. Correct. Perhaps we'll end here for today, Jonathan. Uh, thank you once again for all your insights and analysis. My pleasure. It has been very illuminating. Uh, may Hashem give us strength and wisdom. And may we walk in Hashem's ways and be worthy of His assistance. Amen. His cool. We are Meslev of Hem Shalom, shalom. 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 Shalom.